The following are terms of a binding contract between the host and the listener. The fundamental purpose of this contract is to allow the host to share the content of this podcast in a consensual environment deemed safe by the listener. The host and the listener agree to the following terms set out in this contract. The listener will only play podcasts recorded by the host and the host alone. The host requires the listener's full and undivided attention, meaning the listener must pause the episode when performing other tasks. Exceptions to this clause include driving and folding laundry. Three, the listener shall always conduct themselves in a respectful manner. As such, the listener must not skip ads. Four, if the listener is approaching their limit of tolerable advertisements, they may use the safe word and promo code BONKERS to make a discounted purchase of the promoted product. Then, and only then, will the listener be permitted to stop the commercial. Five, Lastly, the listener must hear the host say, It's time for Last Looks, a recap of Fifty Shades of Grey. Hit the theme. Well, you listen to the last episode, and you have some things you want to get off your chest. Well, listen, friends, you got a Last Looks episode, and I think you're going to be impressed. Last Looks, corrections and omissions, Last Looks, pause. Hello, my submissives. It is me, your dominant Paul Shear, aka Tall John, and welcome to How Did This Get Made? Last Looks, where you, the listener, get to voice your issues on Fifty Shades of Grey. Later in the show, Jason and I will chat about all the movies, TV shows, and comics that we are currently loving. Plus, I will share an exclusive deleted scene from our Fifty Shades of Grey show. And as always, I will reveal next week's movie. But a f- giant shout out to Rob from Long Island for another great opening theme song. Rob, you kill it all the time, and I only wish we could have gotten to see you stand up in Brooklyn. Um, We love these songs. If you have a Last Looks theme song, send it in to us at HowDidThisGetMade at Earwolf.com, but keep them short. 15 to 20 seconds is best, and just a heads up. People, did you know if you pre-ordered my book, I'm going to write you a postcard? That's right. I am going to write you a postcard. Just go to my website or how did this get made? Hit the pre-order button and you will see where you can sign up to get a personalized postcard from me to you. That's right. I'm going to give it to the first 3,000 people that sign up. So you could have bought the book a long time ago and I thank you for that. You can still sign up now. You don't have to do that right away. You could buy the book tomorrow and you can still sign up. As long as you are in the first 3,000, I will give you a postcard. And by the way, this is a funny idea that I thought of that now has become extremely expensive, but I'm still (laughs) doing it. And let me tell you, you don't make that much money in books. But If you don't make it in the first 3,000, you will also get exclusive access to a private part of my website where I'm hosting videos, pictures, all sorts of cool things that you will not be able to see or get anywhere else. And that is called My Secret Scrapbook. It is all stuff from my childhood and more. I'm trying to blow it out. And I thank you all for pre-ordering this book already. There's eBooks and digital books, which I guess are the same (laughs) audio books. I appreciate it so, so much. The sales have been great, and I'm just so thankful. And this is what I want to do. I want to give you something for all your belief in me and buying this book. It means a lot. And if you can't afford the book, I get that. Uh, ask your local public library. Librarians represent to make sure that they order the book. So librarians, please put in a request to get this book. And if you don't want to buy the book, just do that to your local public library. It's totally free. Anyway, we are going to be in Europe March 28th to April 3rd. We're in London for two nights. Limited seats are available. We have sold out in Glasgow. We have sold out in Dublin. We have a lot more seats for Belfast. Belfast, what the fuck is up? Come on out. No, we have a great show already in Belfast. I think we have over 800 people coming to Belfast, but we want to sell out all these shows. Don't you know, Belfast? Don't hold us back. Uh, Anyway, I am so excited to go there. 
Avril will be there for some of our London shows, so that will be a blast. And now, let's get into it. Last week, we talked at length about Fifty Shades of Grey, a movie that a Discord user named Farmboy thinks could have been called Shirtless in Seattle. Boom! That's the way I like it, farm boy. Nice, in, out, funny, I get it. All right, well, we had questions about Fifty Shades of Grey, and we might have even missed a few things. Here is your chance to set us straight. Fact check us, if you will. It is now time for Corrections and Omissions! Welcome, one and all. It's time again for Errors and Omissions. Here we have a special announcement from none other than Randy the Macho Man Savage. Oh, yeah! Thanks, me and Gene. Right now, we have to listen to a bunch of physicians and mathematicians and academicians here to display their wild cognitions. Well, let me tell you, bunch of pencil net geeks, I'm going to come down there and snap you all like a pack of Slim Jims. Whoa, 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 Katie, bar the door. Macho Man, you can't threaten these sad shut-ins every time they submit an error or omission, no matter how petty or inconsequential. Oh, yes, I can, Mean Gene. As soon as I figure out this internet thing, I'm going to drive to each of the parents' homes and shake their homely trees. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Stay tuned for errors and omissions on How Did This Get Made? Thank you, Randy Smith, for that really cool, is that like a pro wrestling interview style theme song? I don't know. I love it. It's great. Let's go to the Discord. Uh, PN, WP, Loma, Mistress of Valentine's, right? So the reason that Anastasia Steele works in a hardware store is because in Twilight, Bella works in Mike Newton's dad's hardware store. Oh, my God. Paloma, really? Which also explains uh, the beefy Mike Newton-looking dude in the hardware store who's always around her. And that wasn't even the most egregious part of the many similarities the english class scene with the pen is because bella has an english class scene with a pen anastasia goes to georgia and christian follows her while bella went to arizona and edward followed her and there were some legit lines of dialogue straight lifted from twilight that i couldn't even believe they didn't get sued over Even that stupid little dance she does, that's because Bella worries about not being able to dance so much that she's grateful that she broke her leg before a dance. Oh my lord, I did not realize that. This is really, I'm I'm finding myself incredibly fascinated by all these similarities. Kat writes, Some fun tidbits I heard on the Fifty Shades of Fiasco episode of the infamous podcast. Salman Rushdie is quoted as saying these books make Twilight look like war and peace. Slam! E.L. James does not seem to have a particularly spicy marriage. Her husband has said, I'm the least romantic fucker that ever lived. I once bought her a tin opener for Christmas, and my first experience of kinky sex was her trying to shove it up my arse. That's right, he's Irish, and that whole, uh, <laughs> I mean, just say, yeah, you're kinky, who cares? I don't want to hear about some fucking tin can opener being shoved up. You know, this this book and these movies feel puritanical. They do. They don't feel sexy or dangerous or weird, and I get it. It's like, like we've talked about in the podcast, it's like somebody who doesn't have Google trying to figure out what like kinky sex is. Anyway, uh, Dr. Guts 1003 writes, this may be a really dumb question, but is the only reason Christian drawn to Anna is because the first time he sees her, she's kneeling on the floor in front of him after she tripped, in other words, in a submissive position? If she just entered the room like a normal person, would he have never given her a second thought? Wow. Deep. Dr. Guts, I'm sure there are experts out there that can tell you the truth, but I love this theory that just by seeing her submissive, he wanted her. I actually think that there was something even different about it. I think that he's not like just attracted to submissive. I think he he saw in her something pure. I mean, look, or did he? Who knows? I I, I, I feel like maybe he just wanted a nice girl. Maybe that's really what it is. And, and he finally met her. I don't know. Seems like he's around a, a bunch of like fashionistas. Not to say they're not nice, but I feel like she stands out because she's so not that. So maybe that's the reason. Or maybe it's just because she was kneeling. He likes people to kneel. End of story. Case closed. And I'm going to guess it's probably neither because this book is too dumb to actually come up with a reason. Let's go to the phones. Maggie from Mesa. Hi, guys. Had a couple other things I wanted to say. 
um, in regards to the Fifty Shades franchise. It's the worst representation of the BDSM community. It's not even close to accurate. If Christian Grey was a real a real dom, he would absolutely not treat her that way. Domination is all about care and protection, not it was all consent, and Anastasia, as a sub, would never be treated that way. Also, a true BDSM relationship, she would be wearing a collar to represent that she was with her master, which, of course, she wasn't. Anyways, just wanted to put that in there. Thank you. Well, okay, great. That's fascinating, and I, and I appreciate people like Maggie sharing with us what is up And this is just yet another voice to tell us how bad they've gotten this. Again, it is a, um, this is Ken Burns making a documentary about the Civil War and just being like, I think this is what happened. Roughly, this is what happened. I think it's like blue and, um, and tan, not blue and gray. That's if, if, that's where I was going. If you didn't get that, anyway, uh, let's go back to the phones. Uh, we got somebody anonymous from Vancouver with some tea to spill. Hi, Paul. Uh, Long time listener, first time caller. Um, I'm calling with some insider tea on Fifty Shades of Gray. It was actually filmed in Vancouver, and that's where I'm from. And I happen to be in some kink circles. And I was at an event once where I met a man, and I won't say his name, um, who was a consultant on the movie. So they hired him to keep, like, continuity in terms of, like, proper kink. However, he stated two things. One, that he would try to correct what was happening on the movie, and people would basically be like, we understand, but we're going to do it this way. So lots of, like, things were not correct kink, even though he was there, hired, paid, and trying to correct it. And then the second thing was he um, had Jamie Dornan over to his house, where he had a dungeon, and showed him some, like, very mild kink. It was basically rope and, um, like, nothing too aggressive. And... There is a quote from him speaking on this where he said, um, quote, I went there, they offered me a beer, and they did dot, 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 whatever they were into. I saw a dominant one with his two submissives. I was like, come on, guys. I know I'm not paying for this, but I'm expecting a show. It was an interesting evening. Then going back to my wife and newborn baby afterwards, dot, 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 I had a long shower before touching either of them. So the whole time, essentially, oh, end quote, the whole time he hated this movie and he hated the kink and he despised everything about it and he essentially was grossed out by very mild kink anyways i thought you would enjoy thanks so much for your show and um i'll listen later i gotta say that bums me out and makes me like fuck you jamie dornan don't do that like you're gross you're gross for me. Don't yuck their yum. Don't yuck their yum, Jamie. I mean, look, that's your opinion of it. That's a, now it's a it's a game of telephone. If that's true, fuck you, Jamie Dornan. All right, back to the Discord. Elaine Smith writes, okay, I may be reading way too much into this, but is E.L. Fudge implying that her main characters, Anastasia and Christian, are made for each other because their last names are Steel and Gray, as in the steel material is gray in color? I know it sounds like a reach, but the theme of each cover of Fifty Shades are grayish metallic themes a silver tie, knot, a masquerade ball mask, and handcuffs on a dark background. Am I reaching here? First of all, Elaine Smith, I like that you call her E.L. Fudge. Second of all, I love this theory, and this is dumb, and I believe it. So the submissive one, I'm tossing out, and I'm going, it's just that (laughs) steel and gray. Oh, God, that's dumb. Rocket Wesker writes, there were um, quite a few lines in the book depicting the aftermath of the beating that were cut from the movie by the director. The two I found the funniest are, Anna says, tentatively, I rub my backside. Ah, it's sore. 
<laughs> oh. Then I bought you some Advil and some Arnica cream, Christian says after a long while. <laughs> oh, man. Don't make me want to read this book. Rocket Wesker, thank you for doing that uh, job there. At Dennis Abrams writes, how did the panel not mention the line, I'm 50 Shades of Fucked Up? This line is supposed to be the emotional climax of the movie, I think. And he picks the strangest thing to say from the POV of characters in the scene and the corniest thing to say from the POV of the viewer who knows the name of the movie. Now, Azra Rova chimes in to say, Fifty Shades of Fucked Up is actually the original fan fiction subtitle tagline, which is why the books were retitled Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay, well, that throws out our name issue. And lastly, Be a Little Brave says, My husband cracked the code. Fifty Shades is a deliberately bad movie as its own form of punishment. It's a metaphor. Whoa. 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 So you're saying that we are all the submissives in watching it? I got to say, you know what? I had different thoughts in my mind, but now I'm making a quick one. Be a little brave. You are the winner. And that's it. You get this theme. Hit it, Sean Fogle. Wow, Be a Little Brave just blew my mind. And I did think we mentioned Fifty Shades of Fucked Up or we said it. I mean, you nailed it. I mean, what else is there to say? It's a clunky-ass line. Thank you, Sean Fogel, for that theme. Thank you for uh, Be a Little Brave for blowing my mind. And remember, if you want to submit a alt-movie tagline or chime in with your own thoughts about the latest episode, hit us up at Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm or call us at 619-PAUL-ASK. Okay, coming up, Jason will join me to talk about the movies, TV, and comic books we are currently loving, but I'm also going to reveal next week's movie. But before we even do that, check out this deleted scene from our Fifty Shades of Grey show where Jason and June can't quite remember the last movie we did on the podcast starring Jamie Dornan. Here we go. Did you have a question? Okay. I'm Chelsea. Was anyone else disappointed that there wasn't any scenes where they were role-playing as bees considering that Christian is also the lead in Wild Mountain Time? I don't know. Wow, this is a deep pull. Two. Wow. Two old school, how did this get made references? Wait, did we do that movie? We did. That's the Irish movie, yeah. Wait a minute. We did a movie called Wild Mountain Time. Remember about the bees? And then they have to I go. I wasn't there for that. You were definitely. Was she I there? Don't, I don't think I was, yeah, I you think were I was there, there either. No, you were both there. It was during pandemic. It was about. Oh, it was the, the pandemic. The, it was With Christian um, Grey and the bees? No, the bees is Nicolas Cage. No, no, this man. is about like a. Oh, remember wait that a second. Irish I am farmer? remembering it. Yeah, yeah. And, like he comes and he wants to land. No, he comes in this one. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah, All right, one more question. Baby. One more question. We're back, baby. We're yeah, back. Yeah, baby. All right, people, uh, I hope you're listening to Matinee Monday. Every Monday, we bring back old episodes. We try to theme it with what we have coming out currently. This week's Matinee Monday was Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1 with Doug Benson. And next week's will be Demolition Man with Wyatt Cenac. So keep on checking these replays of classic episodes every Monday. And now let's welcome Jason to the show for a little something I like to call Just Chat. Anton Wellen, play us in. Paul and Jason have things to say, and it's a fact that we can all call in. Just watching their movies, they're watching TV, they're going to tell me, and we can all call in. Just chat. Huzzah! All right, Jason. Welcome, welcome. We are a week after our very first Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, we have, God. oh it's out? We, we, it's out. It's in the world? It is in the world. <laughs> people have reacted to it. Some people are saying it is their second favorite episode next to Drop Dead Fred. Really? Uh, oh, that's yes. cool. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting. I will tell you this much. Um, people have been asking us, well, are you going to do Every Fifty Shades of Grey, back to back to back, and we are not. That is 
kind of the big announcement. We're going to kind of spread them out. We didn't want to just make you go back to that well week after week it's a, it's after week. It's asking for burnout. You know, I'll say yes. this. For those people who may not know, we recorded these movies, these episodes, three nights in a row at Largo. So... It really is. It's like it's not unlike the tour episodes where by night three, I thought I had lost my mind. You know, yeah. both watching and talking about those movies for three nights in a row was absolute madness. Well, I think what made it different was we have never done every movie in a trilogy back to back. So there was nothing that really happens like you could take all three of those movies and make one. Oh, yeah. And I think that was what was really hard for me to parse. Like, where are we? What's going on? What? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I mean, like, you could really take those three movies and make them the beginning, middle, and end of one movie. Because, yes. because there isn't enough that happens, although a tremendous amount happens. You know, like, oh, yeah. to, to these people in an insanely short amount of time, like, cataclysmic life events happen to which they all seem to just shrug it all off effortlessly. Like, oh, oh well, I guess this guy is here trying to kill me with a butcher's knife. <laughs> okay, got to get it, back it, to work. Got to go. Got to get that money. I got to get publishing these books. <laughs> and that's the way we should all be. You know what? You you play in the Super Bowl like just happened last week, and you go back to work. I watch those guys the day after the Super Bowl get on a plane to go back to Kansas City this morning and looking at the Kansas City Chiefs Instagram account, those guys, like, let them sleep in a little bit more. Like, they have to... Re oh, really? Are they up early? Because they, they have Why? to get back to Kansas to do the, the parades oh, and do all the celebrations. I see. Like, I, of course. I, I did not watch the game. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I, didn't, I haven't even watched any of the trailers or commercials that were Ooh. part of it. And Some that's good what I ones. feel like I got to tuck into is all of that stuff. Well, I told you I have a small part, uh, and maybe it's not out for public knowledge, but I have a small part in Twisters, the sequel to Twister, and man, oh man, that trailer was really? dope. It oh, looked nice. great. Uh, Wolverine, Deadpool, like, I feel like they just right? finished shooting. Yeah. I'm good. It's going to be great. It didn't feel like I saw that much, uh, okay. but it yeah. was great. Like. What I'm excited I saw, for that I was in. in general. I'm excited yes. for that movie basically just to be like one of, to me, I'm thinking of it and I hope it fulfills this because these are, I don't want my expectations to be what spoils a movie for me, but it feels like those kinds of comics where they pair up two characters and it's fun. You know, yes. like there's a great um, Wolverine um, Spider-Man um, story where they bounce back and forth in time Oh. And keep getting stuck in different time periods. Sometimes they're working together. Sometimes they're at at odds. It's an incredible book. It's called like the Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine or something like that. And I feel like this movie could have those vibes, you know, because I know they're I'm, doing a bunch of multiverse stuff. Yes, I'm excited about that as well because you know I wrote uh, one of these team. I actually wrote a couple team ups. I wrote a Drax Ant Man team up, and yep. I wrote a. Uh, Deadpool Spider-Man team up and they are just fun because it's just like doing Lethal Weapon. It's you're yeah. it's a cop story. You're just kind of mixing, you know, like a buddy cop movie. You're just yeah. putting two odd people together. And I and I'm just yeah, I'm excited for it. Have you been watching uh, I've been behind like any of these new Marvel shows like Echo and things like that. Yeah, I'm going to get to it. I watched all of Echo. I watched okay. all of Echo and it was it was fun. It's it's pretty uneven. I thought for if to, for me it felt uneven, but I felt like it was a great beginning to what I hope is a um it's I can't remember what are they calling it Marvel Select maybe yes, or Marvel yeah, the adult Marvel, yeah. Yes, so it's like very like you know, um it's what the Max line is of comics, uh, Marvel Max, the the yes. Max comics. So there's swearing. There's ve it's very violent. The Echo series is very street level, very violent. Great fight choreography. Very fun, imaginative, inventive fight uh, stuff. Street level, you know, hand to hand. I'm about that. Um, it's it's really good. I you know the Kingpin stuff I thought was really interesting. There's a ton of really interesting stuff in all of the flashbacks. I, I read this in a number of reviews of it, and I agreed when I watched it. It takes it a while to lock into place, and that's there's only five episodes. 
The first couple are okay. They're setting the scene. The last couple I thought were really fun and very cool and very interesting and establishing cool mythology. Yeah, I felt like that with the um, with the Hawkeye one, too. It's like, oh, once yeah. it kind of got into its groove, it was really, really fun. Yeah. You know, speaking of something I did not realize was out and I'm so psyched about it, I wanted to see if you were reading it. Are you reading any of this uh, Kelly Thompson, Birds of Prey? No, I haven't read it. Oh, it's good. Yeah. I didn't know it was out. I didn't capture it. And, it's, and you're talking about like street level, fun yes. fighting. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, like I was just thinking about that. It's uh, really, really I'm psyched about this. And I feel like I, I found it a little bit later. I think it started in September. But man, there's some great fun uh, things. New team. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I, I am too. And I'm excited for that. There's a, There have been a bunch of books lately that have come out. There's a new Tom King book. But what is it? It's not... He's got Danger oh, Street, yeah. which has been going on right. for a while. But he's got a new book that I'm totally sp- spacing what it is right now. Well, it's so funny because I've been following uh, Substack lately. I've been playing around on Substack, oh, really? which I like. I'd love, yeah. Oh, it's Love Everlasting. Sorry. Thank you. Love, okay. It's Love Everlasting's the new Tom King book. Go ahead. Okay, got it. All right. No, I was like, I uh, I was looking on his uh, on his X account right now. And uh, Chip Zdarsky is on Substack. Oh. And so it's really fun because he'll post a bunch of like little cool things there. Like I'm just doing dumb shit. Like, but, uh, did but we talk about is, Newburn? Did like, we talk about his images. book Newburn on this? Oh, I think, I think we, we might did. Have. Maybe I think it's I, a great, I, great book. Great story. It's his book with uh, what's his name? Sean Phillips draws all the Ed Brubaker criminal books. His son, Jacob Phillips yeah. draws Newburn, uh, the Chip Zdarsky book along with a bunch of other stuff. It's, and it's gorgeous. By the way, are you talking are you talking about that uh, the book that Tom is doing that uh, Helen of Windhorn? No, or no, that's a different thing. Too, I don't know. He's doing I don't that. Even know oh, what that's that another is. new book. That, I think that this Helen of Windhorn is the new one, and they're basically calling it an epic fantasy meets gothic mystery. It's our Supergirl woman of tomorrow. Cool. Uh, just Great. this beautiful looking book. Yeah. So it's a put on your pull list. I have also just went out and saw a great movie. So June was cast in this movie. Our friend, uh, John Levine, great director, directed Long Shot, but also did Warm Bodies. Um, smart did guy, like a smart, be- really good, talented he, I director. I was in a movie of his called The Night Before. Oh, yeah, The Night Before. He did um, 50-50. Yes. Just a super talented dude. He produced this movie um, that I saw called Scrambled. Uh, June has a small part in it, uh, but the movie is about this woman who is trying to um freeze her eggs like she doesn't want like she basically like wants the option to have kids but currently is not in a relationship just like wants it on the table doesn't know she even wants kids but just wants the option so it's really about her trying to go through this process of freezing her eggs which is a lot more painful than uh than she kind of realizes and in the beginning of that someone's like you actually fucked up. You had the perfect boyfriend and you you let him go. And it's her kind of trying to wrestle with just going through her relationship histories. It's 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 a really it's oh, nice. a really funny movie. I thought it was great. Yeah. It's called Scrambled. It's by Leah McKendrick. She wrote and directed it, produced by John Levine. And the cast is just stacked with really funny Ooh, people. That's great. And I will jump on that and say that I saw today that Leah McKendrick had an article. Um, published that I think is in support of this movie that is all about her personal yes. egg freezing journey. I, th- I think I didn't read the whole article. I just noticed yeah. it and, no, and saved it to read later. But um, and I don't frankly remember what publication it's in, but it's like maybe it's in Vulture, Vanity Fair or something like she she herself has written uh, a story that is, I think, it might have been Harper's, story. I yeah. think. Oh, maybe it's Harper's. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the, it's great. It's really funny. Like June described it as saying like uh, it was like the way that she felt when she first saw a Judd Apatow movie because oh, yeah. it's just hard jokes. The whole movie's hard jokes. It's just something that like no one's like, really made jokes about. And uh, yeah, so uh, it was fun. Scrambled is only out in uh, a handful of theaters, 800 theaters, which is not a lot. Uh, but uh, I'm sure it will come to VOD if it's not in a theater near you. But it's got a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is... Uh, really good. This I mean, is really one of good. those movies that needs your help. You know, like yes. this is one of those movies that these that that people are like, how come they don't make movies like this anymore? How come they don't make those funny, hard, funny movies like the old Judd Apatow movies or whatever you're kind of talking about? Those kind of ensemble based comedies that we just don't see much of anymore. Bridesmaids, all these kind of movies. 
Um, and this is one of them. So go see it in the movie theater, you know, because your money being spent, you know, that box office, that is going to make it makes movies a difference. like this, more movies like this get made. If you don't, we're going to just get more Aquaman and the Lost Kingdoms. That's uh, and, just and what we, we're doing. You we know? need more. We need less of that. I will tell you this much, too. Everybody's great in that movie. Clancy Brown gives an inspired uh, performance. The greatest. <laughs> Now, I will say, Jason, I watched, sat back, relaxed, and watched some Percy Jackson. Oh, yeah. And first of all, uh, you're great, but also, oh, it's great. It's oh, yeah, fun, it's a blast. And it scared the shit out of my kids, the living Good. shit out of them. Like, they were, I mean, like, the first episode... <laughs> It's dark, but it's not that dark. It's not, you know, it's like, yeah, it's yeah. No, but no, dark. but it's, it's like, there's, there's scary stuff. There's monsters in every yes. episode. And, and it was really fun. I mean, I love, like, I love it because I want my kids to have emotional reactions to things. Yeah. And I sometimes feel like movies and TV shows make them cry or make them scared. And I think that that's a good thing to just absolutely get when i them was working yeah at the premiere i watched they played the first two episodes in a theater for the premiere and which was oh, great wow. and i think just because obviously yeah so many people involved with the movie so many people around the movie are um have in their families children who love these books and these stories the audience was full of kids you know like young people who were experiencing the movie and it was so electric to like, there were like two little girls behind me sitting with their parents and the way they were engaging with like <laughs> when um, his stepdad smelly Nate is being oh, so mean yes. to him. They were like, why is he such a mean dad? And it was like, every kid is just getting so emotionally invested in all of the stuff, all of the, all of the stuff with uh, Percy's mom and, and the Minotaur yes. and, and all of it. And kids are, I'm hearing from so many people that like their children are obsessed with this series, which is, which is incredible because I do, I know for a fact that a lot of this fandom felt particularly let down by the film adaptations. Yes. You know, and so well, I think very this rare is a that real a redemption. Yeah. To redo it. I mean, you know, we're we're on the verge, or I guess today uh it's happening, but uh or maybe next week. Um Dune, you know, that's one of those oh, yeah. rare ones where it's like forever, you know, we were stuck with that version of Dune. Not oh, you yeah. know, not you know, not a terrible version, but not the version that it clearly is. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they get a chance to remake a movie that closely in and how it's already been made. And there's something that bums me out because I feel like I loved Anatomy of a Murder and I have a feeling that someone's going to want to read. Anatomy of a Fall. Oh, you, sorry. You Anatomy want, of a no, Fall, yes. Anatomy of a Murder is a movie, to be clear. And a great one, too. Yes. It's a great uh, movie. Great movie. But Anatomy of a Fall is so ripe for a redo. And it's like, oh, you don't need to redo it. It's why? No, no. What are we it's adding fantastic. to it? Now, meanwhile, I'm very excited about Chris Rock remaking Another Round. Did you ever see Another Round? Yes, loved it. Loved I it. I love that, too. But Fantastic. that, I feel like I understand. Uh, that was something I was even looking... I mean, at one point, I looked at the rights of that, and it was like, yeah. oh, DiCaprio was after it. I was like, oh, well, this is... Yeah, no, that's something that... I feel like that is a story you can make here yes. and with with a, in a meaningful way, in a way that part of what made Anatomy of a Fall fantastic was it wasn't an American courtroom drama. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. All of the courtroom stuff of talking without all of the pomp and rigidity of a courtroom drama, it was, I found that movie just riveting. I did that, too. And I the was little so boys connected. perform, every performance is fantastic. The little boys performance is unreal. It really is. I mean, I'm so blown away, but I was really like, you know, I saw it before a lot of people were talking about it and I was excited to see it, but. I didn't even know it would be this much fun. I think that was kind yeah. of the part of it that I didn't understand. And I feel like sometimes it's like, oh, it's a, I want to watch these Academy Award movies. And sometimes it feels like a drag. This year I had a lot of fun watching them. I, I watch a lot of yeah, good ones. I'm still behind on a bunch of them, but I feel the same. There's like, oftentimes I am like, oh, I have to watch like a bunch of like heavy movies now, yeah. you know, when all I really want to do is be watching like fun. <laughs> like I just want to be having a blast, you know? Well, talk about having a blast. Beekeeper. Holy Incredible. Holy shit. 
I want I, I want more beekeepers. Give me beekeeper every day. I I was like, I I thought that plain kind of scratched an itch yep. that I didn't know I needed to be scratched. Well, I did know I needed that scratch, but wow, beekeeper like it's like I see your plane and I and yeah. I give you this. It's like it, it is it is. It was great. Wow. Yeah. So fun. It was so fun and so silly. And I do think our audience will love it. You know, it is Statham. It is peak Statham just with absurd level of, you know, action movie logic on his side where he is a literal beekeeper who is also part of a secret assassin's a uh, uh, independent assassin mercenary organization called the Beekeepers. Um, it, it's so crazy. It's so heightened. It does feel like, and this is the way I felt when June first did uh, Burning Love. Uh, I was like, oh, this is really funny. This is like a fun heightening of it. And now I watch like The Bachelor and those shows, and I'm like, oh, uh, this actually seems like they've heightened past burning love. Like, yeah. they've, oh, like yeah. and, and I kind of feel like Statham movies and even Gerard Butler have been like, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We're like, we're just going to go this way now. We're going to make yeah. it. It's like, we don't care. Like we know that you're with us and they, they have free reign to do whatever they want. What's so funny to me is cause I was also comparing it to plane. And I was like, yeah. what's interesting is Gerard Butler seems to be, and maybe it's just plain or, you know, maybe I'm maybe his next few movies will say a, tell a different story. But I feel like Gerard Butler is now starting to become an everyman put in extraordinary circumstances. Right. And Statham is calcifying as most extraordinary man in absurdly extraordinary circumstances. You know, like <laughs> he gets he does so much killing, maiming, fighting Without firing a shot, I believe he never uses... Oh, no, he does eventually start using guns. Yes. But so much of it, he's frankly purposefully not using guns. He never gets a scratch on him. His baseball hat is never a miss. He is just effortlessly kicking ass in a way that is like... It seems superhuman. And that is delightful. Both of their versions of this... Is, uh, of this type of a movie I'm in for. And I'll say this too, without spoiling too much of the movie, because I think it should be enjoyed. And I think we should do it on the show. But there is... Uh, so we talked about Action, Action Jackson and, and obviously Carl Weathers has passed. Uh, but Action Jackson was kind of crazy because there was like a reveal somewhat at the end that uh, that coach, uh, Craig T. Nelson has like cut off people's dicks and put them in jars and stuff like that. And he's like, Oh, that's a weird specific for villain. And, <laughs> and what I think was so funny about this movie is like Jason Statham really loves cutting off people's fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so brutal. It's so brutal. Well, it's like, it's he so does it so it. clearly and so easily every time. And it's, and eyeballs. And it's all <laughs> just so that he can use their biometrics to get yeah. into locked doors. Oh, it so he's traveling laugh. around with like a bag or a pocket full of fingers. It's the movie is <laughs> a blast. Oh, uh, and, and God bless Josh Hutcherson, who I love, very great. funny and kind of play both sides of that coin of like, he's a great actor, but also could just play up that douche. And, it's, uh, yeah. and Jeremy it, Irons, man. Oh, I Jeremy was just going to say Jeremy Irons. I mean, the movie is essentially, and I mean, you know, it's as are so many movies in this genre, it's essentially like a similar riff as John Wick, you yes. know, like the pouty tantruming child of organized crime ridden family and i won't say anything else about the family storyline but the, the the child of a of a family who's you know mixed up in crime and organized crime and all this stuff pisses off the one person you should never piss off Ugh. and then once the beekeeper is on their case forget about it and and in that way, Jeremy Irons is just chewing the scenery as the the adult who's trying to protect Josh Hutcherson from the beekeeper. And it's great. Oh, I love it so much. I really Everybody love also a hundred percent knows the movie they're in. And that is same with playing. Like yes. Gerard Butler, Mike Coulter, everybody in that movie was like, yep, we get it. We're going to just fucking crush this. And they do. I love it. All right. Well, Jason, it's been great chatting with you. We'll be back right after this. Thank you, Jason. 
All right, it is time to announce our next movie. Next week, we will be going from butt plugs to fight clubs. That's right. Oh, I love it. Uh, We are watching the 2023 rom-com Beautiful Disaster starring Dylan Sprouse and Virginia Gardner. Here is a short breakdown of the plot. A college freshman, Abby Abernathy, tries to distance herself from her dark past while resisting her attraction to a bad boy underground boxer named... Travis Maddox. All right, Rotten Tomatoes gives this film a 29% score on the tomato meter, and letterboxed user Lila M says, Imagine a Disney Channel original movie, but horny. Oh my gosh, I loved this movie. I recommend you watch it, but now just listen to the trailer. Wow, he's so hot. No one's my favorite. It's too late to close it now. Why are you here? I'm just trying to take you to dinner. I'll pick you up at eight. I must break you. Go for it. That's who you're fighting? There's so much about me he doesn't know. And I'm madly in love with you. Shut up and just kiss me. You can stream Beautiful Disaster for free on Hulu and Hoopla, or you can rent it on Apple TV, Amazon, YouTube, and Google Play. I also encourage you to check out, like I mentioned before, Hoopla and Canopy, which are digital media services offered by a local public library. And if you're doing that, if you're consuming your movies, TV, and audiobooks and ebooks, well, make sure you request Joyful Recollections of Trauma, my book, because uh, the more libraries that request it, uh, the better off it is for me. Anyway, uh, that is it for the show. Please remember to rate and review us. It helps. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts, make sure you are following us. You can visit us on social media. And a big thank you to our producers, Scott Sani and Molly Reynolds, our movie picking producer, Avril Halley, our associate producer, Jess Cisneros, and our engineers, Casey Holford and Rich Garcia. We will see you next week for Beautiful Disaster. Disaster.